Hey all, this is Bonifacy. Um, so this is an incredibly important video. Hopefully you, you watched, you got this far to find out. This is where I break down and walk step by step how to do um, ionic problems, okay? Now you already took the notes on how to do it, but the practice problems are more telling, okay? You can actually learn more from seeing how they're done so take incredibly detailed notes. And I'm gonna to try to highlight what I expect and, and that type of thing along the way. Um, hopefully I can draw okay with my, <laughs> my little, little pen here, <laughs> we'll see. So um, when I tell you that NA and CL reacting, I'm not telling you how many NAs you need or how many CLs you need. We're gonna to have to discover that as part of the problem. It's gonna make sense as we go along, okay? So we know for sure we're gonna have at least one NA, so I'll put down NA. And you can put plus CL, okay. Then you look at the periodic table, your periodic table, and you put down the correct number of valence electrons. Na has one, and again, I don't care which side you put it on, okay. CL should have seven. Now, you'll notice there's kind of a lonely electron here. Come on. Do they not let him eat? Okay, one there. So NA has one, CL has one there, one there. Okay, now I'll make it bigger. Down my left. This is kind of annoying. Okay, so CL has seven that look awkward because of my because of the program. And NA has one. Okay. So, and you find that out. Now notice that each have kind of a lonely electron. I'm gonna switch over here to my uh, laser pointer. So this one here has kind of a lonely electron right there. And, and I put them closer to each other because that's actually gonna make things easier. Okay. Now remember everything's goal is to get to eight, which is full or zero, okay? So in this case here, if Na can give away one, it's gonna be happier. Zero below the zero is the full valence shell. Okay, so and um, we we will already kind of kind of talked about that hopefully, and you you feel comfortable. So if you can get down to zero, that's a full valent shell because of the full valent shell below it. And if you can get to eight, that's a full valent shell too. So by doing this, um, now CL should have another one up here. Anyway, CL will have eight, and then they have will have so that that would solve it. So. The left side is complete. Notice that I have all the valence electrons over there and I have the arrow on the left side showing how the electron moved. So the left side, that is the rea reactance is complete. Now we have to do the products. Na will have nothing. And then Cl will be over here and Cl should have eight of them. And hopefully it will let me keep all eight. It, you'll notice it makes them disappear. I think the other ones are mistakes. It's making me hate hate the world. Yay, kind of. CL has eight. Okay, <laughs> kind of. Almost like a mistake down there. There we go. <sighs> anyway, so that's how that looks there. Now, all the electrons in the right spot. We have the same number of atoms on both sides. That's all good. It's not all the way done, but it's done for now. We'll come back to it later. We'll have to add charges still. So let's do CA and S, okay? So in CA, you put CA here and you put an S and you put the number correct number of valence electrons. You look at your periodic table and you realize that CA has two. Again, they aren't gonna be next to each other. Okay. Got pressing. So CA here has two. So I put one on the bottom and one on the side, okay? You are also free to put one on the top and one on the bottom, but I kind of like to put them closer to S because it can make it easier. S has six, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put one here. Okay, I'm getting better maybe. Okay, so six. There we go, six. Now, again, I show two sides with two for, and two sides with one. So in that way, okay. Now, what's their goal? 
to get to eight or zero, right? Full valence shell. So if this electron moves over here and you need to include the arrows or, or you lose points and this one goes down here, it's correct. Okay. Notice that CA will get all the way to zero and S will get all the way to eight. So that's what we want. We put the arrow in the middle, okay? And then finally over here on this side here, we put CA, which now has zero, but it's secret. And then we'll put S right there and S should have eight around it. You don't need to make your electrons this big. Uh, it just might hate for this computer what makes it this big. Okay, there we go. So, <laughs> CA is that way. Now let's do the last one here, K and O. This is where it's going to get interesting, so pay careful attention. So we'll start with K, and then we'll also have O. Okay, I'll put a plus between K. You go look up. Maybe you want to pause right now and as, as practice yourself and look them up yourself and put the dots on yourself. So that's how you do things. Practice helps. Okay, you put one here, over here. This one needs six. Okay, I push really hard. We're pushing really hard out. Let's try pushing really hard. Okay, well, that kind of works. <laughs> Six on there. And K has what? Let's see if I can do it better. Okay. No, this one had one disappear because it hates me. Now, let's go what we know what would happen. K would give one to O. Yay! And then the one disappeared. Okay. Now, would K be full? Well, K would have given its one away. It's awesome. It's at zero. But O is only at seven, so it's not done. So if you remember earlier, I said to you, there's no rule about how many you need. You might need extra Ks or extra Os. So let's ask ourselves. If you had an extra O, you'd have one of six there. Okay. Wouldn't help. You'd have the original O, the original O here, still, still needing one more. Okay, and then you have an extra O needing two more. So you'd need three, that wouldn't help adding an extra O. But if you add an extra K, okay, and there you go. You had an extra K here. This K could give its electron right there and that would take care of the issue, okay? So you need to figure out how many of each one you need. Do you need two Ks, two Os, three of something? You won't generally need more than three of something. Three is the max of something you might need. But you might need three of something and two of another. You'll figure this out. And we'll talk through some problems later on as we go over them that are going to help things make more sense. Okay. So over here, and we go K, K, because you can't lose them, O, and the O would have six on it. Oh, the O would have eight on it, sorry. It took two, so it's gonna be eight. There that works somehow, <laughs> close enough. I've decided I really don't like, I don't want like this. It lost the arrow over here. So you need to have all the arrows showing things move. You need to have all the electrons in the correct spot. S should have this one up here. It disappeared mysteriously on me. So, but we are not done. So here's the next thing for notes, okay? So pause the video and write all this down. Okay, now I'll go over it really quick. If Adam gives away electrons, it becomes what's called a cation. So, and a cation is positive, okay? Here's the reason why. Let's say you start off like, uh, let's take a logical one, lithium here. Lithium has three protons and three electrons, okay? 
If you look up lithium, you'll find out that it needs to give away one of its electrons to get down to two. So it wants to give away one that'll get down to two electrons in full shell. So if it ends up having three protons and two electrons, what are the charges? Well, three plus, then two minus equals out one positive. So that's why it ends up being that way. If you give away electrons, if you give away negative, you're going to be positive. If you give away two negative, you'll be two positive. If you give away one negative, you're just single positive. If you give away three, you're three positive, okay? So if you're giving away negative things, and remember electrons are negative, you're giving away negative, that makes you positive. Now, how can you remember the term cation? Because we're gonna use it a bunch. You ready for the most easy way to remember it, but it's also kind of lame, ready? Cations, look at the word while I'm talking. Now, actually, I'll, I'll switch over to highlighter here. Okay. Cation, C, like I'm seeing something, ah, uh, and the T is like a plus. C, a uh, plus positive ion. You see a uh, plus positive ion. Ha, 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 ha. That's a cation. Okay. Now, if it takes electrons, so something that might take electrons might be uh, fluorine, for example. Fluorine is uh, F. I think it's uh, seven, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Or nine. No, it's nine. Yeah, fluorine is nine, nine protons and nine electrons. Now, it wants that tenth electron because that will give it a full shell. It's going to take one more. So it's going to end up having nine protons and 10 electrons. And remember, electrons are negative and protons are positive. So it's going to overall be a single negative. So it takes an electron, taking negative, accepting negative, okay, makes it negative, okay? And it's called an anion, okay? The way to remember that is a, N for negative, a negative ion. Ha, 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 ha. Why? C, a uh, positive, like a plus ion. <laughs> now, what actually will hold these things together? So if we went back a screen, what's going to hold NaCl together here, the Na and the Cl, is that one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative, and then you magnetically stuck together, like a magnet, like north and south, stuck together. Okay. So let me go ahead, and we have to, it asks us to go back and add the charges. So let's go see. Na gave away an electron, so it's going to be plus. You need to add the plus there. So go back and add the plus. You don't have the charges. It's not correct. Uh, uh, chlorine, which is still wrong over here. Uh, chlorine should be this. That's clear. So it, it took one, right? Now it accepted one, so it is going to be a single negative ion. Okay. So we counted up all its electrons. Chlor uh, chlorine. I don't know. So you'd have to look it up. I don't have a question. But it'll have one more, because it accepts electrons, it's going to have one more negative electron than, than it has protons. Okay. So it's going to be overall negative. Now, moving down to CA and S. CA gave away two. So it, you might be like, oh, gave away. It's positive. You're half right. It is two plus. It gave away two uh, electrons. So it's two plus. Now you might be like, can I do plus two? I'm not going to mark you wrong with plus two. In fact, you'll see plus two from time to time. But the book and most scientists use the two and then the plus. They put the number first. So we just want to look smart and elegant. So we'll just do two plus. Uh, S uh, here uh, accepts two. So because it accepts two, um, it is going to be two minus. Okay, because it's going to have two extra electrons. See how this works? Okay. Now. Really quickly here, how you do the other side, right? Well, each K gave away one. So each K is going to be plus a single one. So, each K, so you can't go, you can't combine these. Um, you can't combine these or anything else to shorten them up. I really need it shown just like this, okay? If you do any shortcuts, it often costs you points, okay? So please write it all out. Yes, I know it's a lot of writing. Puff, okay? So... O accepted two, so O becomes two minus. You will start to learn that they always become the same charges. K always becomes a single plus. CA always becomes two plus. CA always becomes a single minus. It is going to be repetitive. 
Okay. And the more problems you do, the easier you will be like, oh, this becomes that and that becomes that. And it just will, it'll snap. So hopefully that, that helps. Make sure you got that all down. Thank you guys very much. And tomorrow we are going to do some, uh, we're going to do some practice problems with it, or actually the assignment is going to be practice, practice, practice. So thanks.